Black Iron. If you've been on Roblox for a while, that's a name you're probably very familiar with. It's one of the iconic texture series of the classic Roblox catalog, similarly to other classic texture series like Blue Steel, Wanwood, and Adorite, which, fun fact, has an entire black market limited selling website named after it now. Its name is attached to several different classic Roblox accessories, all of which display a relatively similar looking texture. The Black Iron texture is very cool in my opinion. For one thing, the name Black Iron is just inherently intimidating and metal. It makes me feel like I'm about to sail the blocky seas and pillage my enemies every time I put an item featuring it on. And its looks definitely match that level of coolness. Every item in this series looks like it was forged in a blacksmithing furnace inside a PS1 game. Very aesthetic, very metal. Admittedly, it's definitely a little basic when compared to other classic texture series, and I probably wouldn't call it my favorite texture series on Roblox. That honor would probably have to go to Wanwood. But what sets it apart from the rest isn't its looks. It's the respect it commands as the single oldest texture series on the Roblox catalog. But... Why is this the case? What were the first Black Iron items, and how exactly did they pique Roblox's interest enough for them to turn them into a texture series that they kept running for around a decade and a half into the future? Join me as we dive back into the annals of Roblox history and discover the story of Black Iron, Roblox's oldest texture series. Before all that though, I'd like to thank the sponsor of this video, Honkai Star Rail. If the phrase super powerful anime characters and eldritch monsters fighting each other to the death in outer space sounds cool to you, listen up. If it doesn't, I'd really like to know what does sound cool to you because I'm a little bit concerned. That phrase perfectly describes an awesome free multi-platform strategy-based RPG called Honkai Star Rail. In it, you play as a trailblazer, traveling the universe, exploring different worlds, solving puzzles, and using unique strategically crafted teams team lineups to conquer your enemies, all while being treated to a banger OST and stellar, pun intended, animation. It's got 80 million downloads and it's made by Hoyaverse, the makers of Genshin Impact, so you know it's legit. But I know there's only one thing y'all care about on this channel, lore. Don't lie to me, I literally get twice as many views when I include that word in a video title. Well, fear not, because Honkai Star Rail just released their new V1.5 update, and it's chock full of it. There's an entire new main story in Bellabog, a new map called Fixstroll Garden, a new forced star character called Hanya, and two new 5 star characters, Argenti and Huo Huo. Argenti, my personal favorite, is a gentlemanly red armored knight who beats people up with a spear and makes roses sprout out of their corpses, and Huo Huo is awesome at restoring health and has an all new ghost hunting side quest. These two characters are great additions to Honkai's already existing lineup of over 30 playable characters, each of which have their own lores and unique appearances, but they are limited time though, so you'd better download the game quickly if you want to play as them. Right now, if you download Honkai Star Rail using the link in the description and use this redemption code on screen, you'll receive 50 stellar jade for free. And if you log in for 7 days, you'll receive 10 free pulls, aka 10 free chances to unlock the limited time characters or other characters like the coveted Silver Wolf, who's back as part of this update. Thanks again to Honkai for the sponsor, and now, back to the block world. Ah, the block world. Home of the blocks. No awesome animation here. I guess you'll have to download Honkai Star Rail for that. Anyway, on July 30th, 2007, Roblox published the first ever Black Iron item, the Black Iron Crown of Ponage. Right away, it was made clear to the Roblox community that this item was to be very, very unique. Unlike most items at the time, this one wasn't published by the official Roblox account, but instead by Telemon, aka John Shedletsky, Roblox's then creative director. A blog post made the next day made it clear what the item was for. It was for user Pokerman29, who later changed his name to Pokerman. Poker God as a reward for being the first Robloxian to kill 10,000 people in game. It was also promised that in the future, a badge would be awarded to any Robloxian who achieved this milestone and that winning this badge would unlock the crown. However, that would never end up being the case. The promised master level combat badge was never added and the next Black Iron Crown to be awarded wasn't to the next person to reach 10,000 KOs, but instead to user Koopa for winning the Roblox Grand Melee Tournament in August of 2007, which I talked about in more detail in a past video if you're interested. On November 30th, 2007, the second day of the first ever gift explosion, which I've also talked about in a past video, a hat called the Black Iron Gift of Ponage was uploaded. It seemed like this might finally be the moment where Roblox would put the crown into use and make this gift unbox into it, but Roblox immediately put that fantasy to bed by commenting that it wouldn't be the crown, and instead it unboxed into the Helm of the Secret Fire, which is still a cool item, but definitely not what players wanted. After that, no more copies were awarded, and the crown was seemingly 
seemingly forgotten about, doomed to languish as an obscure, forgotten, off-sale item forever. That was until March of 2009, when X Lego X, now transferred to Stravant, was awarded a copy for helping the Roblox team find an exploit. The crown continued to be awarded to various different people over the better part of the next decade, sometimes being awarded for finding critical bugs and exploits, and sometimes by the admins to their own accounts just because they could, I guess. It was awarded to Poker God, Koopa, Stravant, Shedletsky, John, an alt of Shedletsky, Sorkus, an admin, Tone, an admin, Phil, an admin, MF Soccer 94, J Brown, 21 and Mac Geek Pro, who all helped find exploits, and Colby Valentino Crown and Alex Valentino Crown, who were both alts of each other and helped find exploits to extort exclusive rare items out of Roblox and distract from the massive scam operation they were running. It was also awarded to a former Roblox intern called Wynn, who apparently used to own other super rare items like the Crown of the Dark Lord of SQL as well, but who mysteriously had it along with those other items deleted at some point. I'm actually really curious to know what happened here because I can't find a single person online talking about it, but he definitely used to own this thing and he doesn't anymore. So if anyone knows any info about that, let me know. Because this hat was mostly only given to admins or people highly trusted by Roblox, they decided to have a little fun with it by adding a script to it called Local Script. It's unclear why it was added, as all it does is print Hello John to the console and remove one's ability to move objects around using hooks while playtesting in Roblox Studio, but it's there. At one point, it also contained a script called Telemon Tools, which grants the user Phil a 1000% chance of being the murderer in Murder Mystery 2 for 4000 seconds if he wears it in that game. It's a complete and total mystery how that one got in there. I'm sure Phil had absolutely no idea what that script was doing in that crown. Oh, that knife in his hand? Yeah, he's just cutting up some more good. Okay, no mind. Alex Valentino Crown was the last known account to receive the crown, meaning it hasn't been awarded since the end of 2016 and unfortunately probably won't be awarded again. In 2021, it was updated, though this likely was just to take out the Telemon Tools script I mentioned earlier and not a retexture as the Roblox wiki claims. And I hope they never do retexture or remesh it because as it stands right now, this hat's mesh has the unique property of being reflective and displaying warped light patterns all over it, which I think is really cool. With how rarely this crown was awarded and how respected its few owners were in the Roblox community, this hat quickly came to be seen as a high symbol of status, much like a Dominus, and everyone in the community wanted one. The very name Black Iron became almost like Roblox's version of Netherite from Minecraft, a mysterious dark material more powerful than anything ever seen before, and only obtainable by the most courageous and legendary adventurers. It was only fitting, then, that Roblox should allow more players than just the select few that won the crown of Pwnage to prove their worth and obtain this rare material. It was almost exactly one year since the Black Iron Crown of Pwnage was uploaded. August 1st, 2008, and Roblox, as they often did back then, had a brand new building contest for the community, the Roblox Olympics Building Contest. The premise was simple, build a place modeled after an Olympics-related location. The prizes were hats themed after the various different colored rings found in the Olympics logo, and each one had various different requirements to be obtained. Initially, Roblox was going to award a green ring hat to anyone whose place got 10 visits, a yellow ring hat for 100 visits, a blue ring hat for 1,000 visits, a red ring hat for 500 favorites, and a black ring hat for completing a mystery requirement that they wouldn't reveal until the end of the contest. However, at some point along the line, they decided that simply giving out color rings was a bit too boring and wanted to spice them up. So instead of colors, they decided to use some textures that they had used in the past and that the Roblox community were fans of. They also dropped the visits requirements for the prizes in favor of some favorites based ones. The green ring became the Wanwood ring of Olympia and had its requirement dropped entirely, meaning that anyone who entered the contest won it. The yellow ring became the golden ring of Olympia and was awarded to anyone who got five favorites. The blue ring became the blue steel ring of Olympia and was awarded to anyone who got 20 favorites and the red ring became the awesome ring of Olympia and was awarded to anyone who got 100 favorites. And the black ring? Well, as it turned out, that one required you to favorite five Olympics places yourself, and it was transformed into the Black Iron Ring of Olympia. The Black Iron Ring's texture is probably the most far removed from the source take on the material that we've seen to date. It's not nearly as dark as all the other Black Iron accessories, instead being a shiny grayish pewter color, and instead of being covered in the dot-like pockmarks that Black Iron is known for, it's smooth aside from all the giant cracks throughout it. I wouldn't place it as a black iron item if you showed it to me without the name, but I still think it looks very cool. It also happens to be the only ring out of all the rings to have gone limited, and it currently has an average price of almost 50k robux, so it would seem that others agree.
Almost another whole year passed before we got another Black Iron item. On May 14th, 2009, Roblox uploaded the Black Iron Mace of Ponage, and there's not really much to say about it. It's a mace, it costs 750 Robux, it does an okay but not great amount of damage. End of story. And then the Black Iron Texture was abandoned for four years. Yep, that's right. Between 2009 and 2013, no new Black Iron items were published. This has happened before. Roblox is no stranger to starting out texture series and then abruptly abandoning them for no reason. Looking at you, Silverthorn and Xanwood. But obviously, with hindsight, we know that Black Iron didn't end up like that. So when and why did Roblox decide to resurrect this series? Well, on June 23rd, 2013, popular hat retexturer Godsend uploaded a very cool looking retexture model of the Doom Bucket hat. It was solid black with shiny silver rings and horns. Originally, it was called the Dark Steel Bucket, but after a vote from the community, it was decided that the name would be changed to the Black Iron Bucket of Ponage. Even though the classic white pockmarks were once again missing here, the name still seemed to fit, and the model became extremely popular. So, on September 1st, 2013, for the Labor Day sale of 2013, Roblox uploaded it for 13,337 Robux on a timer of 13 hours as the Black Iron Bucket of Ultimate Ponage. It later went limited and remains extremely popular and coveted today, with a current value of 190k Robux on Rollamons. The success of this retexture seemed to resurrect Roblox's interest in the Black Iron series, as just a few months later, in April of 2014, Roblox uploaded the Black Iron Fabergé Egg, which randomly appeared across the maps of the 2014 Egg Hunt. Then, in June of 2014, Roblox smashed two classic texture series together by uploading the Adorite Fedora with Black Iron Accent, which despite being awarded for free to 10,000 people as part of an old summer event, is now valued at 12,000 Robux on Rollamons as a limited. Some of you older Robloxians out there might remember that Roblox used to do gift explosions not only for Christmas, but for Halloween, aka Bloxtober, also. And on October 10th, 2014, as part of that year's Bloxtober gift explosion, Roblox uploaded a gift called the Black Iron Gift of Winged Fright. It costs 10,000 Robux and it unboxed into the Black Iron Bat Helm. The Black Iron Bat Helm is a retexture of another very OG hat called the Blue Steel Bat Helm, which was awarded as the top prize during the Roblox Halloween costume contest of 2007, aka that one time when Roblox had hundreds of kids submit pictures of themselves wearing some of the most cursed Halloween costumes known to man. Seriously, if these kids showed up to my house on Halloween night, I'd be like, oh my god, the purge is happening, time to go grab my chainsaw. To have a new one released seven years later, also on Halloween, and give it another extremely OG texture, that's definitely worth 10k. But the Black Iron Train didn't stop there, because in December of 2014, the Christmas gift explosion was upon us, and on December 3rd of that year, Roblox uploaded the Restricted Gift of Short Supply. It was awarded to any Robloxian who had over 20 limited items, which sounds kinda hard until you remember that limited eggs exist. As a result, 21,584 copies of this gift were awarded, and it opened into to one of four random items. 8,081 gift owners received the Bombastic Shutter Shades, 7,994 received the Blue Steel Shutter Shades, 5,397 received the Viridian Shutter Shades, and 5,356 received the Black Iron Shutter Shades. Strangely, out of the four, the most common ones, Bombastic and Blue Steel, were the only ones to go limited. Before we knew it, the year was 2015. The Black Iron Domino Crown, uploaded on July 1st of 2015, was made to be given exclusively to Roblox interns at the end of their internships. It's actually still given out to this day, and it's unique from all the other Domino Crowns in that it's the only one with white dots. Then, they somehow outdid themselves in terms of how rare they could make a Black Iron item by uploading a gear called the Black Iron Grappling Hook, and then never putting it on sale. But weirdly enough, that doesn't necessarily mean it has no owners. The Great Valare 2, a member of Roblox Roblox's avatar team owns this item along with a few other seemingly unreleased items that he's the only owner of, among them being Redcliffe Champion, Yellow Build Flat Cap, and Skeleton Sword Pack. The only other public owner of each of these items, including the Black Iron Grappling Hook, is an account called Canary Jack, which is likely an alt of Valare. While I was researching this item, I came across this forum thread, and uh, all I'll say is that if hindsight's 2020, these guys must be going through a whole ass pandemic <laughs> right now, goddamn. I'm sure you've noticed a sort of pattern at this point. Roblox tended 
to use the black iron texture almost exclusively for accessories that were extremely rare, expensive, or at the very least, required a significant amount of effort to get. Whether it be finding a random spawn around an egg hunt map, helping Roblox discover a critical exploit, or literally working for Roblox as an intern, this texture stayed true to its organs as a recognizable sign of respectedness and importance among the Roblox community for a long, long time. By this point in the story, we're now in 2016, and while 2016 was Black Iron's most prolific year, with five items being released, that fact was simultaneously a bit of a sign that that old respect had started to kind of fade away a bit in Roblox's eyes. On April 16th, 2016, Roblox uploaded the Black Iron Antlers for 500 Robux on a timer of two days. The relatively lengthy sale period and the fact that it combined a popular mesh and a popular classic texture made for a ton of sales. And what's more, the antlers were brought back for later sales for roughly the same price, except for in 2019 when they were only 400 Robux. As a result, by the time they went limited, they had around 75,000 copies. But believe it or not, they still managed to make their owners a semi-decent profit as they currently sit at a value of 5,000 Robux on Rollamons. After that, on April 27th, came the Black Iron Bavi Sphere, which was a $10 GameStop gift card item redeemed by a little less than 10,000 people. On June 23rd, Roblox semi-redeemed themselves by uploading the Black Iron King of the Night, which despite its pretty mid-price in stock of 1,000 Robux and 200 copies respectively, blew up almost instantly due to its similarity to the Void Star, and now sits at a cool 1.4 million Robux value on Rollamons today. But then on July 28th, they uploaded the Black Iron Face Guard as a gift card item for a Canadian pharmacy chain called Shoppers Drug Mart, and I'm sorry, but this is not a Black Iron item. It's literally just a dark looking piece of armor. That was followed on September 12th by the Executive Black Iron Tentacles, which, again, not a black iron item! I don't care what you say, Roblox, this is just some robotic arms made out of dark metal. Wake up, sheeple, you're being lied to. This is technically an interesting item, as it's one of the first toy code items ever created, having been packaged with the season 1 toy of Keith, one of the OG admins of Roblox, but that also means it's been redeemed 47,561 times, again straying away from the rarity that made black iron so popular in the first place. Further straying happened in 2017, when three more black iron items were released, all of which were very easily obtainable. On January 26th of that year, we got the extremely popular Black Iron Horns, which are one of those well-known slender items that everyone likes to bag on nowadays. They were set at an even worse price and stock combo than Black Iron King of the Night. 2,000 Robux and 10,000 stock. It took roughly four months for them to sell out, and once they did sell out, it took a while for them to become profitable. In June of 2018, roughly one year after they sold out, they were valued at just 4.5k Robux on Rolamons. It was only with more recent avatar trends of everyone wanting to look like TikTokers that recently underwent critical surgery that these horns exploded in value and currently sit at around 100k Robux. Later, in July of 2017, the Black Iron Commando was uploaded, and even though it went off sale shortly after its upload, because of its price of just 50 Robux, it ended up with 94,025 copies. Despite this, as a limited, it now sits at 3.5k value on Rolamons, once again showing just how in demand the very name Black Iron can make an item. On that same day, we also got the Black Iron Katana, which is pretty much just a regular katana, but with a black iron texture and some square particle effects for some reason. It's still on sale today for 2,500 Robux and has sold roughly that same amount of times. We'd come to 2018 now, and three more Black Iron items were uploaded, each of which, once again, sold thousands of copies. On April 12th, we got the Black Iron Branches, which absolutely exploded in popularity upon release and were purchased over 518,000 times before going limited. Even the Black Iron texture wasn't enough to make that amount of stock profitable, as their average selling price is around 500 to 550 Robux these days compared to their original price of 300. Then, on August 2nd, we got the Black Iron Cape, which actually looks really cool cool in my opinion, and currently sits at around 45,000 copies. And finally, on the same day as the Black Iron Capes released, we got the Black Iron Visor, which isn't nearly as popular as the cape, and for good reason in my opinion. It doesn't even use the classic visor model that Roblox visors are known for, which is pretty disappointing. Surprisingly, Roblox managed to shove out two more Black Iron items in 2019. One was the Black Iron Welder Hat, which is still on sale today for 150 Robux, has only been purchased 703 times, and actually looks really cool. I don't know how many of you 
you out there are looking to make the perfect welder avatar, but if you are, I highly recommend giving this hat a try. The other was the black iron pauldrons, which are one of the better looking pauldrons items I've seen, but unfortunately, since all pauldrons items generally suck but I can't really rate them too highly. And then, well, you know the rest. UGC items came along in mid-August, about a week after the pauldrons were uploaded actually, effectively killing off all classic Roblox texture series, black iron included. Well, almost. Some of you may remember that in 2021, Roblox tried doing a thing called Developer Awards, and as part of it, they awarded game developers different retextures of an item called the Crown of O's. The amount of monthly active users, or MAUs, that played your games while this thing was going on would determine which crown you got. I myself managed to snag a Golden Crown of O's, which you'd get by having 100 MAUs, and a Bombastic Crown of O's, which you'd get by having 1000 MAUs. You'd get an Adorite Crown of O's if you got 10k MAUs, and a Sparkle Time Crown of O's if you got 100k MAUs. And if you got got 1 million MAUs, which only around 700 people managed to get before the program was discontinued, you'd receive the Black Iron Crown of O's. That's right, in 2021, almost 15 years after the original Black Iron Crown of Pwnage released, Roblox dropped a new Black Iron Crown once again bearing Black Iron's original purpose, to commemorate outstanding achievements on the Roblox platform. I'm sure it wasn't intentional in any way, shape, or form, but it's definitely poetic justice, and it proves that no matter how many more Black Iron items are made, be they official ones or knockoffs, the legacy of Black Iron on Roblox won't be forgotten anytime soon. And with this video, I aim to keep it that way. Thanks for watching. I've been Nitrolord, and I will see you all next time. Bye!